Hey guys, welcome to an episode that I think you're going to find very useful if you've ever run across an old guitar where you're kind of looking at that maybe it's a top end catalog guitar and maybe just maybe it's worth putting t some time into because the end product might be worth something. Today we're going to be revisiting a guitar that I think you've seen before. It's a K model K150. I think there's an episode link up there and I've had this guitar visit me a couple times sometimes when people work on guitars one person does one thing one person does another I'm the one that does a lot of the heavy structural stuff is what I'm known for and then of course if you leave it with me too long you're gonna find a license plates and matchbooks on it so some people don't want that imagine that so I want to tell you something about this guitar. It is not the same guitar, but this one has been personalized to an artist. Um, but a guitar like this was popular with uh, Arthur Big Boy Crudup. You heard some of his music in the Elvis movie. And one of the best songs in that movie, this is the new Elvis movie, was the tent revival scene and somehow that did not make it into the soundtrack, but I'm sure glad that motorcycle or helicopter, whatever it is, did. Anyway, do you know old men find confidence in display of decibels? Yeah, get used to it. So, what is this guitar? Well, it's in pieces. And it dried out, which is why it's in pieces. And the neck came off without me steaming it off. And that is a good thing because whenever you steam off necks, and we're gonna get into this in a little bit when it's on the bench. Oh, by the way, don't be surprised if you see this guitar in one place and then another and whatever. I got shops set up in different places but it will be my constant companion um, until it's done so um, the main problem with this guitar is it got left in a case string tension up and this happens a lot you know people get guitars they make sure they got a great case for them and they put them away in a safe place and then hot cold the, the things that nature does to us that we can't control you open it up a few years later and you got some problems well one of the problems this particular uh, brand had K when they were using cellul celluloid binding is it would gas off and that's what happened here and when you have the stuff gassing off it is a structural component it's not the main one the curfing and and bracing and all that kind of stuff is but it certainly doesn't help to lose this and one tip I'm going to give you before we hit the bench right away is do not pull the binding off the top and bottom at the same time if you run across a guitar that has a neck that appears to need a reset but this is solid chances are something in the body like a brace has popped loose especially right there or an arch top if you can stick your hand in the f hole right here and feel a tone bar sometimes those tone bars collapse and that causes the arch to collapse anyway you do not want to have the top and the back loose from the sides at the same time and you'll often see me fix one before I do the other and there's a reason for that so that said let's get to work on this K model K 150 check out that pickup we are going to order some binding and what that means let me check the camera angle here what we're up to this is a caliper you don't need something that's really expensive but you got to have it open and up it measures uh, this way it measures this way so if I need to measure something like so I can pull this up like this and it will tell me that it's 84 centimeters or millimeters or 80 million thousandths of a sixteenth thirty second 
Anyway, in all seriousness, I put this on the metric system. I hit zero to make sure it's ready to go. And then what I want to do is there are two pieces here. Let me check the camera in again and we'll zoom in. There are two parts to the binding per se. There's one thin edge up here called the purfling. It's very thin and it doesn't go all the way down and that fills in typically with something that's multicolored and then you've got the binding that sits down in a deeper channel so we're gonna have to order both of those so what you do is you basically open this up like this okay until this part sticks out then you are going to put this you want to make sure that it doesn't hang up anywhere I'm gonna to want to know the depth or height of the purfling that goes in this channel. Help me out there, chick flick teal pointer. So I push down until I get to the bottom of that channel and it tells me I'm at 2.8 millimeters. Likewise, I open it back up. I want to know the depth or thickness of the purfling or purflings that I put together. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I push that in. Notice I'm going to have to turn this a little bit to make sure it doesn't hit the side of the guitar. I want to be up against the side, the inside side of the binding channel. And I've got 1.8 millimeters. So I'm going to go a little bit above that so it gives me room um, to scrape off and form the binding. Same thing here. I'm going to start way up here. And I'm going to get at the bottom of the channel where the binding is going to go, where it's going to sit, and it's going to come all the way up even with the purfling or the top of the guitar. That measurement is 7.86. So again, I'm going to want a little bit more than that. And then likewise, I'm going to come in and find the thickness of the binding that I'm going to use by laying it against the inside channel and pushing it to the edge of the guitar 2.77 then I'm going to take all those measurements and compare them to what I wrote down last year there and this year and they're pretty much the same one tenth of a millimeter off so now it's time to order binding I'm going to have to do both the top and bottom and I have to make sure that the bottom has purfling because sometimes they save costs by doing that but that is how you measure binding and purfling all right here we are on the bench who knows what to do I do I do put your hand down don't you ever raise your hand anybody that knows me when I say show of hands don't ever put your hand up anyway I want to show you what's going on here this is actually split away okay so it's not good that the block actually sp split away the head block is actually split right here I can put this in here and of course the side of the guitar is kind of uh, not that thick of wood and so this is a bad thing what would be worse is if chick flick teal pointer wasn't doing its job and we weren't able to say hey look inside of here and make sure that there's not a chunk of something in there if there's something this big in there trapped in there it's gonna who knows what's gonna happen that's not gonna sit right and if this is off right here your neck is gonna be off this way or this way and you don't want that so first thing we're gonna do is take any number of our tools could be a chisel could be a violin makers knife it could be a parachin knife by the way, they make Bajo Quintos with nothing but this. Anyway, you're going to want to go and take a look at everywhere and make sure that there's no glue, 
pieces of anything here. You're going to see here that this is kind of split. Um, this 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 celluloid stuff just breaks away. We're probably going to have to put another piece of something on here. Again, I like that stripe going down there. Isn't that cool? Um, but we want to clean all this up where everything was, where the glue was, and then what we're going to do is we're going to squirt some glue in there. Now, again, I'm so hung up on getting anything in there. I don't like using air compressors if they have water in the tank and everything gets wet with grease and who else knows what. Nobody buys an air compressor to use just to fix this. See this stuff? Don't shake it. You know there's a video called Shake Can Well I've told you about that Crushed Out did. Frank Hoyer. It's the warning label from a can of WD-40. Anyway, so once I pop this stuff apart, I got any number of palette knives, and I can pull that out of there, like so, or just put something in there and keep it open, like that. And then I'm gonna take, this is just computer air spray. There we go. I swear the production costs when accidents like that happen. Anyway, I'm going to get everywhere where I'm going to have glue here and spray that out like so. Okay, good stuff. You are welcome. Of course, we're going to have our little screwdriver. I mean, our flashlight. Yeah, it's easy to get those two confused. And we're going to look, and I've already taken the chisel and gotten the glue off here. And I'll do that again once everything is hardened up. But I want to show you, I've got a couple pieces. This stuff shows up pretty frequently at craft stores and yard sales. It's leather strips that people use for crafts. So I want a couple of those. And then I can choose, do I want to use hide glue? I don't want to use hide glue on this because I don't ever want this part coming apart. When I do the neck uh, joint, I will use hide glue. Uh, look at this thing, glue syringe. Listen, uh, this is a, a, a name brand one and I don't like it, it come apart. This one is one that you'll find on uh, Amazon and it's pretty beefy and it's actually less expensive than this one. I swear I'm going to get an affiliate page and list all this stuff for you guys. But the nice thing about this one is you take this apart and then it's got all these different, you see that? That drops in there and then you turn it and it doesn't come undone and it has this whole set of all kinds of different sizes going way down to nothing and something much bigger so you can pick what you want there and then you can just take this and squirt this in here this comes in handy if you're doing a lot of heavy uh, gluing work short of that you can use a q-tip or something like that and something else i want to tell you about is have a piece of binding that you know is going to fit here because there's always little pieces left like right there you can see right there's a couple pieces of a celluloid binding and I want to get all that off of there and then I can use this to make sure that my binding is sitting right now pay attention to angles and things I got to get the love pencil out of the wink can because there's an angle right there you see it and when I do my binding, I'm going to want to make sure that angle matches there. Oh, union grievance, chick flick teal's work is being scabbed out. Anyway, see that right there? I'll cut that off. Okay, guys, I have an ample bit of tight bond over on this piece of paper towel. And I have decided that I'm going to use a plastic palette knife and a paintbrush. 
Now this is all water soluble, so I can clean it up later, but I am just going to um, pry this open a little bit and I'm gonna get everything back in there. And I like using the paintbrush because I can put it exactly where I need it to be. Now, when you're using glue out of a bottle, make sure that you clean it up when you're done because you don't want a chunk of glue in here. Remember, anything that gets in the way of the glue, solids, any of that, is going to be a problem for you later. Also, the brush, the viscosity of this is thick enough where it will stick to the brush while I am putting stuff on weird angles underneath because you can see everything split away. I'm not wanting a bunch of it in here where that neck pocket is. I don't need to clean all this up later, but I want to get it everywhere where these surfaces are going to match up. And then while I'm up here, I am going to come in up here because this is also broken away from the guitar and there's curfing and lining or whatever you want to call it there. Okay. And I'm going to end up going around with the glue syringe a little bit later before I start putting the binding on and making sure that there's nothing loose. The binding is not intended to be the adhesive that keeps everything on. Okay, you with me? Good. All right, we've got water and other paper towels around. So now, I'm just going to take this and we're going to press that onto there. Okay. Grab a piece of paper towel. Don't want this stuff in the binding channel, please. Or in here. So as it rushes out, I'm going to want. Ooh, there's one spot right here I missed. Good eye. Good eye right there. This part right here. Ooh, like so. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Now, little trick. I'm going to take this, the smooth side. Well, there goes the motorcycle gang. All right, I've got a couple big clamps here. They're both padded. Now, I'm not going to need to squeeze everything so hard, but I'm going to take this smooth piece here. I'm going to put this clamp here. We're going to go back to the back of the guitar. And we're going to get where it's nice and solid. We don't want to be caving in the side or anything like that. There we go. And I actually have two of these big long clamps. Did y'all see where I put that 1920-ish mandel base back together with thick wood on the back and everything was coming apart? Ooh, there we go. Y'all can't see it, but I can see that the glue line is coming 
together in here. You can see that. None of this is loose here. Give me a little bit more. There we go. Now in the event that there was something that needed to be um, padded up or you had an offset that wasn't just right or something, you could cut another piece of this leather here. And you've seen me do this on cracks where the crack is offset a little bit. So the part that's high, you put another piece of leather on there. That way when you clamp it down, it pushes that down and gets everything even. But I want you to pay attention to here is now we've got a little bit of glue running out the bottom. See that? That kind of tells you how bad things were. And so when we get to doing the binding on the bottom, we're going to want to make sure that there's not a bunch of problem there. And I can feel where the two sides come together right there. And that seems to be nice and smooth. All right, I know you're out there going, dude, you did it. Of course I did. But we're going to get everything that we had with glue on it cleaned up now. And story of our life waiting for glue to dry. All right, guys, welcome to Glue Dry 30 or the next day. We're going to take these clamps off. I forgot to tell you that if you're going to clamp the head block, which is a pretty sturdy part of the guitar, make sure that you're clamping on the other end of something equally sturdy or more, which would be the tail block. But let's take these off now and, um, and make sure everything got nice and level. There we go. Yeah, nothing's cutting loose. Oh, hey, I want to show you something pretty cool. Um, Y'all got one of these. Yeah, you put uh, lantern fuel in something that burns lantern fuel, like maybe your cook stove, or even imagine that, a lantern. And then I got my two little pieces of leather there. And I want to show you some 9 16 tubing. You see that? And what do you know? That fits on there. And then what do you know? Your shop vac hose without an attachment fits right in there snugly. And this becomes either your blower or your vacuum for the inside of any instrument. You see that? I'm going through the part up there that looks like this. I told you about making sure you have one of these templates that that fits up there. Or I can go down through the F holes and blow everything out or whatever. You are welcome. Now let's get on to some doing some binding. Okay, guys, we've talked about binding and binding channels and all that quite a bit. I want to talk about purfling. Purfling is that little decorative edge. The binding channel is right here. And um, let's do this. I can take a piece of binding and show you that fits in there like so. But there's a channel in between the binding channel and it's right here and it's very small and you get these small pieces uh, they look like binding but they lay in that channel right there do you see that and they are decorative and so sometimes you will have a purfling that is very ornate. It will have 
two or three layers. It will be alternating colors of maybe white and black or uh, whatever it may be. But I want to show you that purfling is very thin and it is delicate. So typically it will come, you order it. And you have to know how many pieces will go around. It takes to go around a body, but you can see here, this stuff is um, angel hair pasta is huge compared to this stuff. You see that? And so it comes in these little pieces. And so the first thing you have to do is you have to know how thick the purfling is and also how tall it is so you can figure out does it fit the channel I have? Is it too big? Is it too small? All of that. And then there's a tool that I want to show you. It's a purfling laminator. Purfling is spelled P-U-R-F, not P-E-R-F. Anyway, you see this? It slides open and closed. And so if I want to laminate purfling, let's say I want to put two of these together. These are maple. They're made out of wood. Um, some purfling is made out of the same thing as binding. Um, and the adhesive you would use is different. You could use uh, bind all for either one. Um, you could use wood glue for wood purfling. Or you could use acetone. Acetone can be some terrible stuff if it gets on the finish of your guitar. So always remember that. So here's the way this works. I take this here like so. And I'm going to put a little bit of my adhesive right in here on both sides. I don't want it slopping all over. I want the top to be nice. So I might, you know, use this side to do my... Uh, adhesive work and then I'm just going to put this in here like so I'm going to pull this back that rubber band is just there to keep everything together but I'm going to make sure that both of the ends are down here and what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to use the adhesive I'm using and then I just push down and I pull this through and what it will do is it will keep everything in order while I'm gluing the layers of purfling together. Now, you want to remember, if you're using acetone, this is immediate. So you got to make sure that everything is in shape. On the other hand, if you're using bind all, the setup time on that is two minutes. So you'd be doing a bit, pulling it through, doing a bit more wood glue, same thing. So if you try to rush how fast you're doing um, wood or if you're using bind all instead of acetone you are going to end up with little gaps in your binding product at the end but you will see here that once you get done with everything it's just like binding putting in purfling is just like binding you're gonna put your adhesive you're gonna set it in the channel and then you are going to use uh, binding tape to get everything together. Notice that I've stopped right here at the waist because every time you go through the waist, it is going to fight back at you. So make sure you get one side done and then you can go in and put this on. Now that I've got, once I have the purfling done, on this whole thing. I've got some brand new binding and it's plenty big. You can see there and it will sit in the groove and it will be above the purfling just a tad and I want to make sure that when I put a piece of this on that there's not some gap here so I may um, grind this down a little bit or file this down whatever I want to do there's any number of tools I can use one of these is pretty good but I just want to make sure that my purfling is is out where it needs to be now I see some people saying well I'm gonna put a piece of binding by the way this is old binding you don't want to use this I want to put my binding on first 
and then I can slip the purfling in behind it. I mean, you could do it that way. The problem is, is if you get any glue right here on the bottom of the binding channel or between the bottom and side in that corner, your purfling is going to stick up. It's not going to go in there. So I'm going to get this last piece glued up and in place and let it set up and cut it at the angle it needs to be. And then we will put the binding on this whole thing. Once that's done and only when is that is done, am I going to turn this over because in in this project we're starting to see that the old binding is coming off and we're seeing a part where the kerfing is completely gone here. What that means is we're going to take the back off of this once we get all the celluloid binding off. Again, protect yourself when you're using this stuff because it is bad, bad for you. There we go. Time for purfling to dry. Okay, before we start the binding, we need to pay attention to a little detail. This is a Stumac file. It has no teeth on the edges or on the tip. That is really important. You'll see here in a minute. So when I start pulling the binding tape off of where we put the purfling, like so, we're going to expect, inspect this pretty carefully. You know, people respect what you inspect, not what you expect. So if I look down or take something here and I see that there's a, a edge of the purfling channel sticking out just a little bit that would cause the binding. And using a piece of binding is a pretty good deal to find this. And if I see that there is something like there's something right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's pushing that out. I would simply take this file and go along here and make sure that the flat part with no teeth is on the binding channel. And I can go along and make sure that there's nothing sticking out that is going to push the binding out. Because if that happens, it's a problem. So I'm using a piece of binding as a guide and I can see if there's any cracks like there's a little bit of glue right there and a tad bit of that channel sticking out. Now remember this part of the purfling here right here is going to be hid behind the binding you see that so not to worry about that make sure you catch that detail because it would be terrible if this wonderful finish were up against something that wasn't pristine, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so... Uh, 
Okay, so another little thing I want to tell you about, once you've got everything where the binding is going to look good there, you may see some little gaps right there. That is between the body and the kerfing, a little crack there. We know that this is dried out. Look at this. Look at how much that moves. So we're going to take some yellow glue. I'm not going to use hide glue, but we're going to go in wherever there is a little bit of a problem and we're going to put a very thin little gap of yellow glue there and push it down and then we're going to take it and make sure that there's nothing sticking up in the binding channel we really don't want that and then while you have a wet rag in there it's a good idea look at all that would have got glued in or messed with our binding adhesive my how dirty mr clean would be offended okay guys it is the next day and that purfling is all dried and everything's good we're being careful with this binding tape because this guitar was drying out and that's not good for the finish so we're gonna have some touch up to do here but we are now at a point where we are going to put some binding on this thing and before we do that we should probably open the binding you notice that i wrote down the number the lot number the order number off of this binding and wrote it on this because i have a binding that i used on the bajo quinto and it's not the same one of these binds is totally different okay so when i go to scrape in this i'm going to put it in here and then later i'll have a couple of pieces left over okay so I am not going to open this up and have it spring all over the place. At some point, I will find the middle of one of these and make sure it lines up back here. But what I want to do is I want to take this binding. I don't want this binding or this binding or this binding or this binding. I want my binding, Nurse Ratchet. I want my binding. Anyway, what is that? I'm going to make sure that I have this, which is a great file I've told you about. And I want to make sure that there's nothing sticking up in the channel, especially if there's something sticking out past where this purfling that I put in is. Because if you do, there will be a gap there. So I'm going to go around and check this. And I'm just going to use this and follow this around and see what I have. Once I get that done on the whole top, then I will start popping this open and finding the middle, and then we will get out the glue and the tape, and we will go to town, brother. Okay, let's catch up. I've taken and started at the back here, in the middle, right here and come all the way up to here and stopped right here. I always stop at the waist because it never fails. If you glue it all at once, the waist will pop out and then you've got a gap right here that I don't want to deal with. So um, I've got my handy dandy tape dispenser and I'm just going to put this right up to about there like so there we go and then we're going to pull this back just a little bit and get that in there and then we'll just start grabbing it and pushing. You want to push that top out just a little bit. 
and make sure that it rides that binding push. And this stuff is going to want to jump all over the place when you get close to that waist. Okay. And so I'm going to let that pop in there. Just like that. And there, I know where our glue ends. Our adhesive. Again, the main thing is you want to push down. Make sure that that binding drops down in the channel. Okay? Get a little tad bit right to that corner. There we go. This is probably the most important piece of tape on the whole job. And I'm going to put a couple more there, too. But remember, we're not doing the whole waist radius here. Because if it pops out, that's okay. We can rework it. I'm going to put a piece of tape here on the end where that binding is not flopping all over the place. And then we're going to make sure that our tape right here is nice and tight going into the waist there. Fill in a couple gaps here. There we go. Time for binding solvent to dry. All right, guys, here we go again. It's the next day. It's always the next day. The last time I left you, we had put binding tape all the way around, and we had come up from the center of the binding to the where the pin uh, uh, strap button goes down here. And I recall telling you that when you're coming up on the waist of a guitar, you only want to do half the waist and stop there and see how things go. Because working this part up here and pulling it tight has a tendency to pop the binding away from the waist and then you've got a gap to deal with. And everything up here is great. Um, we are certainly not out of the woods with this guitar yet because the bottom is a mess. But this is going good. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, there we go. The binding glue or solvent stopped right there. There's no gap there. And if we pull this off, we put this on here to kind of form it and get get used to where it's going to be but when we pull that back you can see that everything laid down in there now we take one of these um, razor knives and before we get to working on the next part of the binding is going to be glued we're going to put a weight on that like that and pry that away from there and now we're just going to come in here and make sure that there's nothing in that channel that would stop us from gluing the rest of it down and that looks good so we're going to get our binding glue out again and we're going to start the tedious task of getting a bunch of binding tape strips 
ready to go and I will catch up with you at the end when we are gluing done gluing this part and this part Off to the other side. All right. You can see that the heel of the neck is going to drop in where I have not glued this yet. So we're going to trim that off. But we're going to let this get all dried up for the next 12 hours. Just like we did the other part like so and then we'll give it a little bit more time to dry up because the next step is we are actually going to once this top is solid let me explain this to you one more time if the top or bottom or back soundboard back is loose anywhere that allows the sides in violins and other instruments it spurs to start bending this way which creates a problem with the action so when you see an arch top that doesn't seem to have a gap down here but the action is really high again you've got tone bars here this one's got a piece of of kind of padding there and they notched the tone bar for the pickup so these guitars that don't have that are acoustic that don't have a pickup they didn't notch them like that so that makes a weak point once we're inside of here this thing is not going to be very acoustically <laughs> perfect but once we get in here Oh, let me show you here while we're here. You see, you see when the binding went, it started to pop off the curving. So once we get in the, take the bottom off, we're not going to pull the top curving off because every, everything is here. I don't want to get there. But we'll go in and reinforce everything with high glue, hot high glue. But when it comes to this part, you can see that this is all loose so we will carefully take the binding off the purfling and get the back open and then we'll take a look at how we can reinforce the tone bar so someday this part of it doesn't sink where the bridge goes we know how that goes I've done that with a, a bunch of other ones and then we'll come in here and have a look at reinforcing the tone bar because we can see that it's separated from the top right there and over here so that's it i will catch up with you when we start this procedure oh by the way nothing around here scares me at all yet this is all easy money in fact this thing drying out the way it did and the neck just drying off of it saved a ton of work because once you start introducing steam things can get wacky okay it's time to do some really delicate work we need to remember that we are going to have to put purfling and binding here and this celluloid binding is nasty stuff you don't want to breathe it so the special mask made for my channel will be going on my face so we're going to start off with the purfling okay a couple tools that will help you straight edged utility blade with some tape on it to keep it away from everything else you don't have to use scotch tape because the tolerances aren't that much but you can pop this back like this 
and then keep just that part like so a palette knife the quarter inch chisel and one of these things but what you're basically trying to do if you're not going to soften this up with heat is you're just going to come along at the interface of the binding and the wood here and just kind of score that and wiggle it a little bit like so see that you want to remember the binding and the purfling are different things on this guitar okay and they're not going to come off together there's a channel right there and then the purfling channel is up here this is the purfling is probably where you're going to get yourself into a little bit of trouble if there is any because the binding is a lot bigger and it wants to separate out of its channel pretty easy did you see that right there yeah okay so once you get the razor blade working for you and it, everything's coming off pretty well you start getting into a rhythm here like so there we go you can take your file Again, no teeth on the side and just go around and touch up that channel and get rid of anything that's hanging off of it or whatever and that will help you don't try to make it any bigger but definitely smooth it out like so but now once you got that all smooth then it's a lot easier to get in behind this purfling to score that and when that starts coming off you can see where the bottom of the channel is you just come in along there hold your finger like when you're scraping or running a cutting torch you can set the depth using your finger and you just come in and work this loose along the line you're really not trying to cut it you're just trying to get behind it and you're also not trying to cut the the channel that it goes into any deeper oh there we go see that see what's happening there there we go same thing nice and easy one pass will do it i'm going to be happy that i was gentle with that okay now we're getting down to the nitty gritty or real fine razor blade work is paying off and we're getting where the channel is nice and protected and we are up here where I believe just about everything is loose which means we should be able to take a knife pop it in here and get the back off of it you'll see that live all right guys i stopped this one right here it's a good good uh spot it's almost an hour long and we really don't want that but we've got it where the back is coming off and then we can get inside of it and fix curfing and major body stuff to get the back purfling and binding on and that's what will happen in the next episode we're going to have a look inside and see what the effects of time and drying out and all that have done and once we get through the body repair we're going to get back on putting the neck on and putting the hardware back on and the pickup is out for repair somewhere else and we will have another one under our belt so See you next week with this exciting part. <sighs> you know, if you do this in church and you do it kind of casually, like over here, or in any meeting, people will start yawning. <sighs> there you go. Go to sleep. Sleep therapy. This session's on me. The next one will be more expensive. See you soon.